Congressman Scalise, welcome back to the show. Sean, great to be back with you. So you heard Mitch McConnell there congratulating Joe Biden on becoming the president-elect. Some of your members in the House, they're not giving up hope. Mo Brooks says that it's causing division in the GOP. Let me ask you, what do you think about this effort that, that Mo Brooks is leading? Is it putting the leadership in as in a pinch? And where does it stand overall? Well, Sean, where I've been consistently talking about over the last few months is since the election, there have been a lot of questions raised and there's a legal process. President Trump has been exercising the legal process, but he also has been supporting the process for Joe Biden to start a transition. He's been doing both. There's still a few cases out there. Uh, we know that the Supreme Court didn't take up the case the other day, and I signed on encouraging the court to frankly address this question of whether or not electors, as the Constitution calls for, are selected in the format that legislatures call for. That didn't happen in a number of states. And that's really at the heart of where millions of people are frustrated. Some states, through their secretary of state, through their Supreme Court, made up their own rules that were different than what the legislature selected for choosing electors. We, we've got to fix this going forward. This can't be the way uh, that we allow, uh, you know, just you go into a court. If you don't like what the legislature wrote, you just change it in the middle of the game. This isn't before the game. This is literally at halftime changing the rules. So you know what's interesting, uh, Congressman, is that I feel like sometimes politicians do what they need to do, not surprising, uh, depending on who's in power. And we saw this with Merrick Garland when the Senate was controlled by the Republicans. Barack Obama appointed him. And there was this thing that you can't appoint somebody uh, in the final term of a presidency. I get the nuance that Mitch McConnell made. I'm not saying I don't get it. But I'm just saying that, that once there was a vacancy when a Republican was in office, granted, we controlled the Senate at that time. We were of the same party. Uh, we had no problem pushing through Amy Comey Barrett, which was an amazing pick. I'm glad the president did it. So don't get yeah. me wrong. The question I have for you is, do you think in four years when we win the presidency full outright that the Democrats might take a page from the Republican playbook and start filing lawsuits and playing by the same kind of uh, tactics that Republicans are using? Well, let's keep in mind that they were filing lawsuits months ago because they, and only in selected states, they, they knew that their best chance of winning states like Pennsylvania, even Michigan, where Trump did better than everybody expected four years ago, uh, was to set up this process where you mail out ballots, not just to people who are legally on the rolls, but just to anybody, uh, whether they're on the rolls legally or not. You had a lot of ballots out there, and you saw cases where people said, hold on, I moved and a ballot was sent to the to the old location or somebody that moved out of state. This is going on in Georgia right now, uh, where people are getting requests for ba ballots who don't even live in the state of Georgia because they're literally mailing ballots to anybody who's ever been registered. Th th that's not the kind of chaos we want. But Democrats went to court to change it to where it is now. You go to Bush v. Gore in 2000, uh, you know, I guess they would have liked everybody to acknowledge a President Gore uh, prior, because they were counting in Broward County. They're literally just making up votes in Broward County until the court finally stepped in and said, enough already. Uh, the, the voters, we got to solve our elections on election night, Sean. Yeah. This idea that days and weeks after the election, they're still finding ballots. It's going on in New York right now. Claudia Tenney's up by 12 votes. And yet they found 55 ballots in a desk drawer just a few days ago. This is over a month after the election. You wonder why people's confidence in the election gets undermined. That can't continue to go on. I still don't understand that one. It's like, you know, I saw those ballots somewhere. I mean, who, who, I, mean I don't know how whoever does that doesn't get prosecuted. That just, it blows my mind. Yeah. The places that they find ballots and someone just sort of like, it's going, oh yeah, I found a few in my pocket. There were some in behind the couch drawer. and in this drawer. Like, this should be against the law and people should be prosecuted. Yeah, there's, there's I just nothing I, to be concerned about here, right? right? I just uh, hope know, this, Republicans this the learn their lesson that, that all of this mail-in ballot stuff that existed, all of these maneuvers that occurred without the state legislature approving them in the various states, Republicans watched this happen. And I'm not blaming anyone in particular, but I'm saying that we watched it happen in Nevada. We watched it happen in Pennsylvania. And I know some people did it, but I just wish that there was more attention. And I hope that we don't go, okay, enough, let's move on. I hope we stay persistent and make sure that we remedy this, not just for the upcoming midterms, but for the future so that this stuff doesn't happen again. It has again. to get remedied. Yeah. It has to get remedied, Sean, for future elections just to restore integrity in the process. Let's have some kind of consistency where on election night you find out the results. That's how most states work. Florida is a larger state than Pennsylvania. They had the result in two hours. Pennsylvania, they were counting for days and weeks after the election. 
that kind of stuff is what undermines trust. So let me ask you, uh, I, I think right now, first of all, I, I want to play out the, I, I just don't know we have time, I want to play out this scenario because if Mo Brooks stands up and objects on January 6th, at the end of the day, uh, this is still a house controlled by Nancy Pelosi. Well, of course, Nancy Pelosi is still the speaker. She'll have her own challenges getting reelected speaker, but she has a majority on her right. side. It's a razor thin majority. Uh, but that's, you know, that's where the House is right now. Yeah. I just, I think it's important for people to understand that, that we're talking about these objections, and yet, I hate to say it, because, but it's just a reality. Nancy Pelosi still controls the House, and I don't think she's going to be doing Donald Trump any favors. She hasn't for the last four years. She hasn't even played nice. But I think that this definitely switches to underscore the importance of these Senate races in Georgia. This is the ball game, Congressman. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has made it clear if we can win Georgia, then we can be more aggressive with the nominees for, the, for, uh, for a Biden administration. Right. And then you had Chuck Schumer just gloating. If we change Georgia, we change America. Right. By God, uh, I don't think the people of Georgia share the New York values of Chuck Schumer, not most of them, uh, for sure. But people have to vote. And this is going to be so important. Everybody that knows what's at stake has to vote. Uh, and, and I think you're seeing a very big push on both sides. I think you'll see a very high turnout in Georgia. I don't think there are going to be many more minds changed. It's whether or not people that voted in the primary are going to vote again. You know, I, I want to play you a quick soundbite of Kayleigh McEnany today uh, giving her press briefing. She talked about your Democratic colleague, Eric Swalwell. There was no coverage, however, of Swalwell being the one implicated with not Russia, but China. In fact, the New York Times website as of this morning, had not one result for Eric Swalwell's ties to Chinese spies. Not one result. And when the Swalwell story broke, guess how many minutes of coverage it got on ABC, NBC, MSNBC, and CBS? Zero. Congressman, your Democratic colleague that leads the Intel Committee had a relationship with a, a someone tied to the Chinese government, the communist Chinese government. Now, I know that he has denied this, but so did Anthony Weiner. Well, this is very alarming. Uh, you know, when you look at the charges, by the way, he hasn't denied that he had a relationship with the Chinese spy. Uh, that's at the heart of, of the, what was reported by Axios, is that this is going back to the days when he was a city councilman, uh, that they went out and found him. They bundled money for him to help him get elected. Uh, they infiltrated his office with what everybody expects was Chinese spies. Why isn't he answering questions about this? Why isn't Speaker Pelosi answering was she aware of these ties to, a, ties to a Chinese spy before she put him on the Intelligence Committee? Frankly, she should remove him from the Intelligence Committee. But it also raises other questions. Why did Speaker Pelosi withdraw from what was a bipartisan uh, committee to look into China's activities? Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of concerns about China on many fronts. We were having a bipartisan commission put together to look into that. And then she pulled back support. Uh, why are they appeasing China? Then you see, and this isn't one, but... Senator Feinstein uh, had her office infiltrated by Chinese spies as well. Uh, if people aren't alarmed at what's going on by China, they ought to be. But why, why does Speaker Pelosi keep Eric Swalwell on the Intel Committee in the midst of this scandal? Four years, four years after a Russian hoax, right, we are now sitting around talking about real concrete evidence and relationships with a member of Congress who is on the Intel Committee having a relationship that he is not denying with a Chinese spy paid for and bought by the Chinese Communist government. I, I don't, this to me is an absolute no-brainer, and it says a lot about Speaker Pelosi that she won't do anything about it. And about the mainstream media that they won't cover it. Yeah. They, by the way, they were very quick to cover every false <laughs> allegation uh, that was made by people like Eric Swalwell. He was the I first know. to say everybody, tr Trump and everybody else is a Russian agent, a Russian spy, and ironically, it turns out he's the one who had a relationship with a Chinese spy and, it, and was regurgitating their talking points to try to shift it to Russia. Yeah, you can't make this up. Congressman, thank you, as always, for coming on and sharing with us. Uh, if we don't see you again, have a very, very happy and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Sean. Great being back. All right. Good to see you. Coming up.